Warning, the following video has massive spoilers of the My Little Pony comics published by IDW Publishing. This video is made after the releases of main series comic number 17, the entirety of the micro series, Friends Forever number 3, and the 2013 annual. All issues prior and up to those comics are subject to spoilerage, along with what little information has been published about future comics, up to main series comic number 20 and Friends Forever number 6. You have been warned. You know why I love the IDW comics? Because sometimes they provide us with stories that the show probably wouldn't be able to give us and expand on certain characters in ways the show probably doesn't have time to do. Odds are, the show won't ever give us that Celestia episode we've all wanted forever, but the comics have given us plenty of insight into her character. Just look at her micro-comic. From that we learn that she's very protective of her friends, almost to a fault. In both Rarity and Luna's micro-comics, we learn that she likes spending her time off going to the spa and getting pampered. In Friends Forever number 3 with her and Spike, we learn that while she's a teacher first and foremost, which we also learned in her micro-comic, she does have a desire to go out on adventures, but she doesn't because she's always so busy similar to Cadence in Three's a Crowd. And in the latest arc, we found out that she may have had a thing for King freaking Sombra. And if the covers of the upcoming comics are any indication, we're going to get a lot more information about her. And it's not just Celestia that's been given more characterization in the comics. Not only does Luna have one of the best micro-comics, but she also has a large supporting role in the Nightmare Rarity arc and Zen in the Art of the Gazebo Repair. Also thanks to the comics, we've learned a lot about Star Swirl the Bearded. After making a brief cameo in Friends Forever number 2 with the CMC and Discord, we learned loads about his character in comic number 17. Most people thought that Star Swirl was a reclusive shut-in who never learned the magic of friendship. In that issue, Luna described him as being similar to Pinkie Pie. Apparently, he was like a mad scientist or magician or something like that. Hopefully, the remainder of the issues in this arc will explain why he didn't possess the friendship levels necessary to achieve Alicorn Hood. We also get some extra development for Shining Armor and Princess Cadence, which is greatly appreciated since the only episode that really delved into either of their characters was Three's a Crowd, meaning that Shining is woefully underdeveloped. The only things we really learned about him from his episode appearances is that he's Captain of the Royal Guard, co-ruler of the Crystal Empire, possibly the coach of the Crystal Empire athletes at the Equestria Games, and that he was apparently the greatest brother a little filly could ask for. As a result, Shining's often seen as a bit of a Mary Sue who doesn't have any real faults. However, the fourth arc of the comics, nay anything, revealed how Shining courted Princess Cadence, and how he wasn't the perfect dude growing up. He was awkward and nerdy and a total putz, but he was also pretty smart and was able to make a spectacle of himself when the moment called for it, making him a bit of an inspiration to those around him. And then there's Big Macintosh. Oh, how long have we wanted characterization for Big Mac? And even even though we were able to figure out most of the stuff that Zen and the Art of the Gazebo Repair presented beforehand, the presentation of it in this arc was absolutely masterful. Big Mac is the kind of guy who lives in his own head. He's very perceptive of the world around him. He just either chooses to or is unable to articulate it to the outside world. What we didn't know is that he's a total ladies man who, somewhat unintentionally, woos nearly every mare he comes across, from Fleetfoot to Zakora to Princess Luna to basically any mare that comes within 10 feet of the guy. We also didn't know that he isn't exactly an absolute workhorse. If his family circus-esque adventure around Ponyville is any indication, he isn't all work all the time. He is prone to getting sidetracked into doing all sorts of things, presumably if someone else pressures him into it. But the character who's received the biggest push from the comics would have to be Spike. Season 4 has been particularly unkind to the poor guy. In numerous episodes this season, Spike has just been the world's punching bag. Nearly everything he's done this season and has backfired against him, whether it was to advance the plot or to just make us think that the universe is conspiring against him. But the comics, on the other hand, have been fairly kind to him. He was the key reason why the day was saved in the Nightmare Rarity arc, he was fairly intelligent in his own microcomic, and he and Celestia were both outstanding in their Friends Forever comic. And best of all, he hasn't been made into a punching bag like Season 4 has done to him. It's almost like the comic writers have more respect for Spike's character than the show writers do. I know that the show takes precedent over the comic in terms of canon, Daring Don't in comic number 11 is a prime example of that, but given that the comic books are meant to be taken as canon so long as the show doesn't overrule that canon, I absolutely love the comics for breathing new life into already established characters, taking characters that the show would have trouble finding time to develop, and really making something out of them. That is why I love the IDW comics. And for the fact that they're more easily capable of throwing in pop culture references that the show probably can't. Anyway, in the comments, why don't you guys tell me what your favorite thing about the comics are. Thanks, and I'll see y'all later.